Welcome again. We are happy to be here. We're trying this on a Tuesday. We want to have our virtual adventure on a Tuesday um, to check things out. <laughs> Just yes. Um, so we are excited. Um, Lori's going to be um, instructing most of this class and um, the camera settings are a little weird, but we are going to go through with this. So we are excited that you are here as well. And um, this is a combined virtual retreat on money mindset and personal growth. Yes. So Tammy, why did we pick this? Do you remember why did we agree on this topic? Because I remember. <laughs> we are finding that we are living in some difficult times. That's the reality of it. Uh, our nation, and I think it's overall the world, is living in some times where there's a lot of inflation and financial distress for many households. And I want to understand, I want you to understand that we know that. Um, at the same time, there's still people out there kicking bottom. Like there's still people out there that are becoming very success. I I going through breakthroughs in their businesses because uh, they understand what does it mean to have an abundant mindset, Tammy? And what does that mean to you, Tammy? So abundant mindset is being happy with everything I do have and realizing that God has provided me with everything I need. Um, you know, so that's, and I think of it kind of like when I was talking about, um, the, uh, just earlier about like the grapes and raspberries, cause I was thinking about our conversation we'd had and I walked down to the garden and I realized when I was down there, I was like, you know, nature provides us with the stories or the experiences or tells us how we need to live, you know? And a lot of times you're looking, I'm looking at all my beautiful grapevines, um, you know, that are going, and I didn't think they were going to do anything because they came on so late this year. Um, cause we had a bad frost and, um, but so, but then I'm looking and I'm looking at those beautiful vines and then I lift up, you lift up the leaves because that's where all the grapes are mm. They're underneath the leaves. There's all that abundance, you know? Or in the same way, you know, but it's like God hides sometimes that abundance is there. We just have to search for it. It's like under the zucchini leaves, under the um, different squash plants, even potatoes, you know, the, your vegetable, the potatoes are in the dirt. They're not above the ground or the blueberries or raspberries. The abundance is there. A lot of times we just don't see it. We don't appreciate what we do have. Wonderful. I love this. And you said I was going to teach it. But to me, I mean, I already I already learned so much from you, Tammy. <laughs> and what are the takeaways from this uh, virtual mindset adventure about money and abundance? My goal, right, Tammy and my and our, our goal is for you to change your money man's mindset and abundance mindset. And what we're going to do, you're going to hear me a lot talking about money and or abundance is the same thing. And I, I'm going to quote a lot from a book called uh, Happy Money by Ken Honda. I, I'm holding it here in my hand. You will see it later in one of the slides that I'm going to share. But the concept of Ken Honda is that he learned through, with his dad that money is energy also. Of course, if you tell a little kid what's money, you can say it's, it's a coin or it's dollars, you know, that as an exchange, you will get a product or service, right? When you pay for it using these coins or dollars. But also remember, money was not always that. Money uh, was also something that, oh, yeah, so I'm recording. I was just like panicking all of a sudden. Um, money is also, uh, it used to be shells. Remember those? Uh, part of history where money wasn't made and then uh, Native Americans or, or people and tribes and things like that used to change goods and exchange and trade with seashells or gems or different things. Even in Holland, once upon a time, tulips became so expensive that people would travel from all over the world to find a tulip and people would sell their furniture because they wanted a tulip. I don't know if you've heard about that story. It's just fascinating how depending on the value and the energy you give it, 
things will have value or not, correct? So, hey, Heather, Heather, I am happy you're here. Thanks for being here, Heather. Please interact. Please, if you want to go ahead and join us in the Zoom room and be with us, you're welcome to do so. Anybody else joining, please request the Zoom link. We will share it with you. So I you actually can join. shared it as well. It is right there on the on our Facebook okay. Live post. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Hop in. We want you to hop in and and join us in this interaction. We love to see the comments as we go on Facebook Live. But if you want to join us and be here with us and ask the questions right here live, uh, we will be happy to have you. So, depending on how much energy we put, the value we put into money, we're gonna think of it as scarce or. It's out there in abundance. And our takeaway, the biggest thing we want you to think about after this uh, meeting here today with this general session, and if you want to join the VIP session, I'm going to offer you an assessment that is going to help you understand or if you want to schedule one, we can give you more details as to how you can partake of that assessment, not in the virtual mindset setting, but in a private one-on-one. -on -one. Tammy and I will be so happy to help you understand what you need to do for that. Um, if it's not during this virtual mindset adventure, it's going to be somewhere at a different one-on-one -on -one, uh, situation or opportunity for you. But it's so important for you to understand generational uh, situations and how your upbringing, your parents, and gener even generations have uh, been instilled in you ideas about money. Okay, so we want you to understand that and that will be the biggest takeaway for you to understand that abundance and money is available to you and it wants you as much as you want it. Okay, so oh, share, Tammy just shared the Zoom link right there in the comments. So this is awesome. Thank you, Tammy. I was going to mention, Lori, you know, a lot of people don't think of trade as money. But it is when you trade your valuable time or products for something else of the same value and products. And that's the main, the secret to when you do trade, because I've done a lot of trading um, for like teaching art lessons and stuff for skate lessons or dance lessons um, for my daughters. But when you do do trade like that, just make sure the value is there for both of you. Absolutely. You have to really agree. And there's some people, Tammy, that in my world have said, no, I really would like to not do an exchange. Let's trade because money is energy. And then, and that's the way it happens. It doesn't matter if we're, I'm paying her or him and they're paying me. I don't know. There's a value on that too. Any trade and bartering system is great as long as the value is there. I agree with you, Tammy, and I love that. And I want you to understand Money, it's a means to new experiences, to comfort, to opportunities. And if you're watching, please, Heather or whomever else, if it's just, what you're watching the replay, tell us what you think is money. Um, put it in the comments. And what does it give us access to? Money can also expose us or give us opportunities to, ex to experiences, luxury, security and safety, and also fun. If you think of people that go on, you know, to football games, you know, I'm like, wow, that person has the money or, or, or wants to make that a priority in their lives to enjoy a good football game or, you know, sports or athletes, uh, athletes or a concert for a good artist that, you know, entertainment and fun. But money itself isn't worth more than the paper is printed on. If you think about it, we only give it the value based on the equivalence we give it. So it's a perception, it's a perception. And, and sometimes we think it's scarce, it's a scarce commodity. And if you think that way, I wanna invite you to think different. Right now there's transactions happening. Right now there's online shopping happening. Right now our banks are, are loaded with money. It, you are surrounded by it the same as you're surrounded which we had Dr. Martin in our podcast earlier and she talked about the beauty of the color green in nature remember every leaf every grass blade that's how much abundance we have and that's infinite it is infinite and it's just a matter of us like Tammy said paying attention know where to find it 
and being aware of the resources and us being resourceful. How about you? Tell me what you think so far. Put it in the comments. I mean, I just I just want us to have a better understanding um, about money in general. OK, so I want to tell me, do you want, have any comments to add? Yeah, I, no, pull up I my think slides. a lot of times people forget that. Um, and I've had people talk, you know, because they're like, well, why would you ever do trade? Well, I'm very careful and very picky on who I do trade with. Um, but I've traded murals for braces with an orthodontist. You know, that's like $16,000 <laughs> worth of work it was. You that's know. amazing. So, and I've always traded, but I always be fair. Um, and I have done some trades where the people didn't follow through on their side, mm. you know, but you, it is a risk, but isn't it a risk with every day when you buy something Yes. or somebody agrees to pay something, you pay you cash and they don't. Yep. Um, so there are those things as well. So it's just, it's just another form of money. Um, but there's abundance and, you know, it's like, I can walk through my house and it's like, okay, that was from trade. <laughs> and, and it's, it's an ex exchange, right? We have it's, our, it's our an exchange. It's just like, ex instead of exchanging dollar bills, you're exchanging time or, you know, instead of me getting, um, dollar bills back, I'm getting <clears throat> my hair done or I'm getting lessons a service one of my or a kids or braces or something totally different um and it can be for anything and everybody we all have different gifts and talents and so there might be something that you do that you're like oh I never thought of it that way so it's just opening our mind to different experiences and the different abundances and different ways to do things Absolutely. Um, Our common coach, uh, Tammy Kane, I love it when he says money is an exchange of energy. It he is. And that. it's what you make a priority too. just kind of like you were talking about, you know, it's like, do we go to a concert? Do we, mm -hmm. or do we, do we have to spend it on um, food? And food is a necessity. It is a need, but it all depends on what we purchase. Right. Totally. Um, totally. The priority, you are so right. So here we have, um, we want you to unlock your financial freedom. We want you to start heading, after you watch this with us, are you gonna be financially free? No, that's not where, are we financial advisors? No, we're not. That's not what we're guaranteeing or offering, okay? But we want you to start thinking, thinking about this and changing your thoughts on this theme. It says this quote, if you want to change the fruits, you will first have to change the roots. If you want to change the visible, you must first change the invisible. Why is this so important? Bob Proctor has said, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands, meaning every idea, every invention, everything has been an idea first, okay? So somebody saw it in their heads. And I wanna see here, Heather and Kelly says, my mom used to, oh, sorry. Oh, I kind of, my mom used to tell me to save all my money because I will end up being bro a broke widow with no one or nothing to help me out. So it needs less to say, I have a strange relationship with money. See, and all these ideas, thanks for sharing, Kelly. This is what we want. We want people to open up, to be vulnerable, to be open-minded, to receive, share and receive an exchange, right? What we're doing here is currency. Time is also currency, right? Uh, this is an exchange of energy and experiences. She was, uh, I do not have a relationship with my mother anymore. She was toxic. I had to move on with my life. So I have to come to terms with everything she made me feel. But money is the one thing that I still have issues with. Hey, you are at the right place. Congratulations for being here here Kelly I love this and look see this is exactly what this is about this is about you changing the invisible right which is that information you have that um that sense that okay you need to pile it up you need to hoard it right but no no like a dam right a dam when you open it and the water flows it serves us for for a purpose it, it hydrates us it's it's it, it nourishes the soil and the plants and it's always going to rain again. 
hopefully, right? So sorry when there's droughts and things like that, but no, you would always hope for abundance, right? So hoarding that money, maybe your mom was afraid and see, these are the generational ideas some people have is the, is the root of evil, right? And no, even in the Bible, it says that Money is great because if you're using it to help the poor, to to give other opportunities and enjoy life and be joyful, not being dominated by it, controlled by it, but to do good with it, it can be an amazing, amazing medium, medium for you to obtain uh, new experiences, comfort, opportunities. The lack of money sometimes is the root of evil because then people start wanting to uh, commit you know, robbery and the lack of it just makes people miserable, wondering like, where are my resources? Because they don't understand how to be resourceful or find resources. Well, so and that's like, like you were mentioning, Laurie, she probably, her mom, Kelly, your mom probably went through something when she was younger right. or grandparents of going without. Um, I, I know growing up, I didn't, I always got hand-me-downs. So, and then I would learn how to sew, of course, and make, remake clothes. So, and that was my degree was in fashion. So I have a tendency to keep clothing because I'm like, oh, I could redo this or make it into this for this person or that, because I see that. And because of the way I was raised in on farms and stuff, I do keep extra food. I, I'm not one of those that, oh, I'm going to go to the store today, every single day. No. Um, you do have to prepare for some stuff. I agree. But I also know my grandmother's favorite quote was, don't, oh, don't store, say, don't save anything for an special occasion. She, each day is a special occasion. I and love so that. she would use her china and different things all the time. Instead of, you know, how a lot of times people are like, oh, that's too nice. I can't use it. And so I've gotten to this thing. Everything I have, you can use, you know, it's either for to visualize, to look at on display, or if it's a beautiful piece of glassware, it's to use, um, you know, because if we store it up, it, it even talks about it in the Bible, don't store it up for moss to destroy, right? Every day is a special occasion. You're so right, Tammy. And um, I see you, Kelly, you're here. Um, please continue sharing. Heather, ask questions if we're going to try to do our best to answer. Are we saying be reckless with it? Don't be a good steward of it? No. Are we saying instant gratification is the deal? No, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that we need to enjoy life and enjoy those things we have because we deserve it. We're worthy of it. And every day is a special day. And so many times people just, when is that special day? It never comes, right? It never comes. And no, we need to realize that we are worth it. And here, this is what we want you to discover. We want you to discover the fact that nature offers pr profound lessons in abundance. And that let's do this exercise. And I want you, if you're watching with us beautifully, to, and, 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 the replay to sit down um, and or, or lay down home, wherever you want, as long as you're relaxed. And I want you to look at this picture. I come from the Caribbean and I used to love the rainforest, national rainforest we have there in Puerto Rico. It's called the El Yunque. This is not a picture from El Yunque. This is a picture that I got from, from the internet. It's just representing a forest or the woods, right? And I want you to look at it and observe the abundance. And how, when we were having this interview with Dr. Martin, how she talked about how nature takes care of itself and how there's a, a, so much abundance and balance. And I want you to notice the biodiversity. Rainforests are home to an extraordinary variety of species. And you can, you can tr translate this also like into another biome, right? Like a beach or anywhere out an island, right? A single, a uh, hectare of a, of a forest contain hundreds of different types of trees, each supporting unique species of insects, birds, mammals, and fungi even. This immense diversity creates a vibrant and resilient ecosystem. And if you can also think about how the rainforest takes care of itself, you think about continuous growth, 
The warm, humid climate of tropical rainforests allows for year-round growth. Plants and trees constantly produce new leaves and flowers and fruits, ensuring a steady supply of food for herbivores and, in turn, for carnivores even. Okay, so it's a beautiful cycle that happens. There's continuous growth. And then there's, in, in by, by, by product of that is, there's the new, this nutrient recycling. Okay, we talked about the cycle. This ha despite having nutrient poor soil, rainforests thrive because of efficient nutrient recycling. Like the decomposers like fungi and bacteria break down dead plant and animal matter, rapidly returning nutrients to the soil to be reused by living plants. Why am I doing this? Because when we talked a lot about unlocking freedom in nature, we want you to learn from nature, right? We want you to realize and learn from nature, the interdependence, the water. Look at how beautiful those pictures are. There's more here, look. Um, look at the greenery, the foliage. So this vibrant self-sustaining ecosystem exemplifies abundance, showcasing how Inter the, the interconnectedness and diversity and efficient resource use can create a thriving and bountiful environment. And I want you to think of those words, bounty. I want you to think of rich supply that we have talked about. And we want you to discover that from nature and realize it. So now if you want to write in the comments, I have a question for you. How is it? Think of a time when you've been out in nature and describe the abundance you, with your memory, or you realize at the time nature was providing. I have many, many examples um, in our Facebook Live today with Dr. Martin. I love the fact that she mentioned many, many instances where nature and the divine replied or gave her an answer in moments where she was going through a lot of tribulation and nature provided for her. So write in your comments, if you can share with us, when was the last time you witnessed uh, nature providing beautiful balance and abundance? Okay, you can think about it too. Right. And, and Lori, I'm just gonna let you know that I can't see any of the comments for some reason. Okay. I can, I think. So I'll keep you, I'll keep you posted. Um, if you look at this scripture also, it's a beautiful verse for to everyone who has will more be given and he will have an abundance. That is a beautiful promise. And I will take that very seriously. I will take this um, very serious because if we have, and like Tammy started talking about being grateful for her abundance means being grateful and aware of what she already has. It's beautiful because this is a promise that is telling us that if we realize what we have, we are going to be given and we're going to have abundance. And what we want you to do now after discovering um, and in the forest, you know, how is that ecosystem just amazing? We want you to experience a positive relationship with money, with abundance, with if it's bartering, if it's trading, you know, like Tammy said, we want you to think about gratitude. We want you to surround yourself with positivity, positive people. Remember the power of proximity. And we want you to reframe your neg negative thoughts about abundance and money. So number one is practicing gratitude. Like I said, we want you to focus on what you have rather than what you lack. And this is very, very important. Have you seen or been around a person that complains? Oh, always negative about life, always complaining about their health, about money's time. don't have. <laughs> with what they don't have. And they get in this cave where they don't, they, they block themselves so much that they, they, they're, they're blocked. So it's, their, their vision is limited to what we have said so many times, resources available. There's libraries that most likely in every municipality is for free. You can sit down and read a book and learn a new skill so that you can develop a, 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 and launch a new business, a new product. The universities now online are offering free courses, like literally. And of course, Tammy and I offer a, a plethora of resources 
one-on-one -on -one coaching courses so that you can grow, so that you can understand how to live to your fullest potential and open your eyes to your talents and your skills and your gifts and graces. Tammy and I have put together these amazing courses and resources for you. Tammy, do you have something to add? I was just saying, I'm adding a whole coaching line for helping to brand your business and stuff um, here this week. I was working on that some yesterday and we're working with for just so many different things. And we are going to be starting a patron account. So because we are creators um, with content and the, the cost of our apps and different things, we're like, you know, we'll provide more as you know, we can. So we enjoy this. We enjoy being with people and helping others out all the time. But we always have this, when we come together, Lori, you and I have this positive mindset that, okay, we're going to help. And, and to be honest, sometimes I'll come in and I'm like totally drained and I'm like, and Lori can tell. And so she's giving me uplifting quotes or sharing videos. And it's like, Hey, hey it's okay. And, and a lot of times it's because of who we've been around or we just got off of a phone call or something. So there are times that you're just kind of down. And that's where like Dr. Martin, um, Marcia said is go out in nature, um, help or, or call a friend that, you know, is going to lift you up. And, and what we have going on here, Tammy and I are giving, giving, giving out of the goodness of our heart because we're so passionate about serving, about providing content for our community. We also need to lead by example. And this is why we're going to start these programs where there's membership or sponsoring or, co or coaching because we need to lead by example. We need to uh, charge for these products and services we are wanting to offer. And that's exactly what you need to do too. There's so much you can give give, give, give. But at some point you're running a business and we want to lead by example and help you understand you need to charge for your uh, product or service and a decent amount because you it has value. And um, bef before that, we need to understand that when we focus on what we have rather on what we lack, we acknowledge and we appreciate those positive acts, aspects in our life. And if we, when we shift that mindset from scar scarcity, then we are starting to think more in terms of abundance. And so we need to start with gratitude. The second step over there that I showed you in this slide was surround yourself with positivity. Tammy and I are not going anywhere. We are creators and we don't have a lack of ideas. We don't have a lack of ideas. And we and and we um we are here with an abundance of creation, uh, creativities on our programs and what we're offering because we that's we that's we're born creators, right? So we love hanging out with each other because we, like Tammy was saying, we like to encourage each other, give bounce off of each other's ideas. So your environment plays a significant role in shaping your mindset. You, the people you surround yourself uh, with, the five people you surround with yourself with the most is basically who you're going to become. So uh, for Kelly, that sadly, I know that our moms are supposed to be our best friends and et cetera. And if her mom, she says, you know, she was not... Uh, the best person to hang out with because of all these ideas. And I know probably it was generational. She needs to make, make a choice. And she's made a choice to set a boundary there and draw a line. Um, if, if, if somebody's not being supportive of you, um, then you need to uh, distance yourself. I'm not going to say cut because, you know, there are relatives and we're we can't, we can't do that. But then if we know whom to listen to and how to distance ourselves so from those negative experiences, it is very crucial for you to do that. So you need to curate your, uh, curate your media consumption to include inspirational and motivational content. And that's what you get here with Tammy and I, right, Tammy? <laughs> right. I was going to mention, Laurie, I've been in Kelly's shoes. Um, so, and it is hard, but what you do is you just, you, you might meet that person at a restaurant for dinner uh, here or there, but, you know, and it doesn't matter if it's a, cause I've had friends that were so nate at times that they went through this negative phase that it's like, no, I, I can't, I can't hang out with you. 
um, until you're out of that. But I'm not going to tell him. I just pray for him. <laughs> so, but you, you have to, sometimes you do, you have to distance yourself and always listen to those that are going to encourage you and are good examples and have been there. Um, don't ever listen to advice from people who've never done it or have never been there because they really don't understand you. Right, right. And if they don't have what it takes and if they don't understand and don't get us wrong, there's people that do not um, they don't have the fruit on their tree. They're not building like you're building something, a business or something. I have ambition like that, but they're great cheerleaders. Keep those around, keep those around. But uh, I love what Tammy said that you need to be surrounded by the people that have already gone and are a little bit ahead of you so that you can learn from them and they can encourage you. Okay. Not push you down. Um, oh, Kelly saying she hasn't spoken to her in five years. I'm a new woman now. Okay, Kelly, if that's the line you needed to draw, if that's the boundary and it's been so good for you, I totally understand and congratulations. Not everybody has that courage to make that statement and, and continue on and congratulations. Um, so I've done everything you're saying. Good, good, good. <laughs> awesome. The third thing for us to experience a change in our mindset about abundance and money is to reframe our negative thoughts, which is in our books. In one of my seven R's in my book, Freedom from Self-Slavery, the seven R's method, um, I have that. We need to reframe, reframe, meaning, ah, yeah, that book, that book. Um, and then Tammy's, Tammy's. Um, I don't have mine. <laughs> I, I, you don't have yours. I have it, but it's just with the, uh, it's, uh, right here, right here. Yes. <laughs> Um, we, we talk about this when you have a beautiful painting, but a very horrible frame. Okay. It doesn't, it's not going to be as beautiful in a museum. You see these beautiful uh, pieces of art. So, you know, in a beautiful, um, delicate, uh, frame and, and that piece of art kind of pops out anyways, that's, that's my experience when I have seen that. So when negative thoughts arise, challenge, challenge them challenge them. And like nowadays with technology, you know how in, in futuristic movies, there's information that people can go left, right, push those negative thoughts away, challenge them and reframe them instead of saying, I can't afford it, for example. Well, I will do my best to be able to afford it, to come up with a plan, to create a blueprint, to be able to afford it. Okay. So change them into positive ones. I call this changing your programming uh flipping the tortilla whatever you want to call it you need to change it because instead of dwelling on failures and setbacks and in that negativity focus on what you can learn from the experience and how you can grow use positive affirmations to reinforce a constructive mindset and here's where i'm going to go back to my slides um oh here we are tammy and i with our books and in Tammy's book, mine, uh, in my book, you're going to find a, ch a chapter specifically on reframing negative thoughts. But in Tammy's book, uh, she says there's endless positivities in page 81. If you know, if Tammy is teaching us here, if you hear from somebody that there's endless positive possibilities, we, we like to say this, we like to say, breathe in positivity to excel possibilities is because Tammy has had plenty experience understanding that when a door closes another one will or two or three or four or five or ten will open and she the way her 3d art works is just amazing and she it, her resources and and her mediums and what she uses to create beautiful masterpieces is amazing super impressive so if tammy and i can help you understand that we need to reframe your negative thoughts from scarcity to a more abundant mindset that is a great start but let me tell you it doesn't stop there you need to nourish that and you need to continue feeding that positiveness in your brain it's like weeding out the you know the weeds 
from the garden and then you need to nurture and take care of the flowers right and the and the trees that are going to produce the fruit so you need, i tell you i've been listening to guided meditations on abundance for 7 years or more up until yesterday this morning i listened to a guided meditation that has a lot of affirmations on money and let me explain you I'm i was going to throw in something real quick lori yep um, before you go one of the quotes that always comes up when you were talking about that was the quote, and I might not be saying this correctly, was what if you only get tomorrow, tomorrow, the only things that are there are the things that you were thankful for today. You know, it's like, what have you taken time to thank God for, for today? What are you thankful for? What are you grateful for that you do have? When we start looking and start counting or writing down the things that we're grateful for, or even make a jar and throw in different <clears throat> things you're grateful for, so that when you're down, you can just pull it out. Um, you start realizing how much you do have, you know. And a lot of times, we're surrounded by great advisors or great people that can give us help us out, and sometimes we don't even realize it, and sometimes family or friends don't realize that the person they're with is actually helping them or giving them great nuggets. It's like, look at the great golden nuggets we got from um, Marsha this morning. You know, it's like every guest we bring on share so much if we just listen. And, and that goes to your point, Tammy, about if, what if today's our last day, what you said about um, your grandma's quote or telling you a principle that says don't don't save it for a special occasion don't save it for a special day because what if that special day never comes you're like you're needing to understand that you're valuable already you are special already make it a special occasion right so I love that I love that you're so right and Kelly I agree with you I love this you said I am so grateful for everything that has happened to me it's made me who I am today, and I'm grateful always. And Kelly, if you can turn what I say a mess into your message, it is just fascinating and you're getting it. You know, our adversities, our experiences that are not so wonderful, that are kind of negative, when we don't dwell on them and, and look at them like, oh, my goodness, to stop us and to limit our potential, we turn those experiences into knowledge and wisdom. And it's what's called what I call turning our messes into our messages. So that is wonderful. Maybe, Kelly, you have something going there and you can empower women um, that have come uh, from a toxic relationship with their mothers. That's an amazing thing that is super necessary out there. Um, also... Our coaches, um, one coach told me, you can't afford not to afford this. I was, I don't think I can afford your program. And they said, Lo, who are you going to be one year from now if you stay the way you are? If you stay thinking the way you are, our programs promise or guarantee this and this and this and this. This is what we are offering to you. And I'm like, okay. And then that's when the resources come <laughs> into play. We get creative on finding ways to afford it. I have um, uh, eight children. I've said it many, many times. I have eight children and my family was living in Puerto Rico when I was feeling that my children were not witnessing the beauty of where I came from. And it was eight children for, for many years. Um, you know, now they're growing up and leaving the nest. But for, for a long time, the, the eight children were there and I wanted to give them the experience. And from we can't afford to go, it became a family effort to think of ways to make it happen. And that was amazing. That was an amazing experience. Well, so and if you look back, you know, it's like with my, our daughters, it was what they talk about and their memories is all about the adventures, the experiences everywhere we took them because we, we took them, yeah, to Disneyland and Disney world a few times, but the, some of the memories that they loved the most were like, at the coast or on this hike or that hike or, um, you know, backpacking, um, just different adventures that you do together as a family. And people don't realize that's where memories are made when you do adventures. And to this day, whenever we have our grandkids up or the family, we like to do adventures together um, where you get us because I find that when you spend time doing something, whether it's going on a walk or a hike, that's where you really get to know somebody. 
you know, I just took my grandson driving because so, he's trying to get his driver's license. And just while he's driving, listening to him, um, tell him, tell me what he's doing and going through. And it, it's just amazing. That is awesome. Awesome. And those experiences have no, it's, are invaluable, right? You cannot put a price tag on them, right? But the value is immense. So thank you for sharing that. And I want to remember, we've been um, going through discovering, discovering how is it that we can learn from nature about the power of abundance and balance and, and supplies and rich supply and um we, we talked a little bit about that. We talked about experiencing a, a change, right, in our mindset about money. And now is when tr we can experience transformation. And, and we have been talking about affirmations and changing our programming, right? So how is it that we can uh, transform if with this repetitive positive affirmations and you guys i want you to look at this these are too many on a, on, on a slide but i want you to we, we don't we're not in a rush here we we're, we're doing good with time there's an abundance of time right and i want you to think about these ones we can read them one at a time we can skip some i can just pick my favorite ones and we can leave this slide long enough for you to pause this or take a screenshot and we can even come up with a download for you we can give you more information how you can have access to a download for you but i want you to look at this i am open to receiving all the abundance the universe has to offer maybe i can read some and tammy you can read your favorite ones too no look at number 2 my life is filled with prosperity and abundance in every area. And you're talking as it's already, I think. It is a fact that your life is already filled and with I, prosperity. I, I am grateful for the endless blessings in my life. Yeah. I attract wealth and success effortlessly. Like we think we need to work so hard and we do that. Not don't, you know, don't get me wrong. We do, but sometimes it just comes with uh, the efforts that we have already made with attracting and manifesting those things that we want more in our lives, okay? Or because we love what we're doing, it doesn't feel like we're making an effort or like it's work because we love what we do. It's fun. It's fun. I know. And, and what is, what's funny is I probably, I, I am working on stuff all the time. I'm always <laughs> doing something, right? But I love it. Yeah. And, you know, what I don't love is cleaning my house. You know? <laughs> and you're like, let me continue working in our business. <laughs> I, you're right. Yes. And I don't love sitting at the computer in a way, but just because just having to sit, but I actually do find it fun creating videos and doing things. And I love sitting and talking with Lori and coming up with new ideas of how we can help others or talking to um, clients or people, or like the other night went to a party, my clients throw, and it's a celebration of life party that she does has done for 15 years awesome. the first time she did it she had me come and show my art because I did her, their art piece for them and um it's you know so and she wanted me to meet all of their friends and of course we're invited every year since but they have a, this whole band but it's her way of thanking everybody for being a part of their lives and just celebrating the fact that she is alive and sharing how thankful she is for each person. It's like, how many people take the time out to do that, to celebrate the fact that they are alive? What a great and, idea. You know, she great had idea. almost died of breast cancer um, a couple different times, and but she was here. And so she does that every year. I mean, they brought a live band in and everything. And, and it was a, it's always a great experience because everybody is so positive and so uplifting. There's there's two of those or, or a few of those concepts there. She's being grateful, gratitude. Yes. She's surrounding herself with positivity and reframing her thoughts like, hey, I beat this thing, the cancer, whatever. I have all these friends and that is amazing. What a what a great example. So we we need to do this. We need to do this more and more and more. And if you guys have your favorite ones, you can put them on post-it notes around in your dashboard, in your car, in your wallet, um, around your screen, in your computer, if you spend a lot of time in your computer. I tell you, I promise you, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to preach something that 
is woo woo, but there's a power in the mess and subliminal messages. Remember, I do clinical hypnosis and the power of the subconscious mind and subliminal messages. We know the detriment of that. And we know about subliminal messages for, for bad things and for bad purposes. My husband had some health issues and I started putting every cell heals my body knows how to heal on its own and i started putting it around his screen because he he works for it so he's in front of a, his screen a lot uh he's a living miracle and 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 it, because it was god's will i know that but also because i can tell you that story it's a long story later but it was a miracle because of many 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 things many resources many things but that is one i wanted to take advantage of so if you are working on something, write a little positive affirmation around. It has to be in the present as it's it's already happening. So that's why I love the one I attract wealth. My life is filled with prosperity because you are already grateful. You are thinking of it as it's, as, as it's already happening. Okay, so I deserve to throw this out there also, Lori. When it, this is a so this is an example. So if I go to an art show take my, and just do pay thousands of dollars to be at an art show. But if I go with the mindset that, oh, I need this so desperately, I need that money right now. And, you know, I better get a sales. Otherwise I'm not, it's a negative. Okay. It's negative remarks. But if I go with the positive mindset, Hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to meet new people. I'm going to get new clients. Do you see that? Just that little twist in that mindset. I always end up with a client, you know, and you have to make sure the people that are there, they enjoy it. And you talk to people, you enjoy people. You don't just sit there and read a book, you know, um, but it's that positive mindset before you even go to a show or go to work. It has to start with you. Wonderful, wonderful, because then now you're irradiating that energy and that that energy is going to attract. You're going to be like a magnet to it. Like I said, I don't know if you heard me at the beginning, at the same as we want money, money wants us. Money wants to be in our pockets. Money wants to be in our bank accounts. And please don't think we're being materialistic here. Even consider this in the spiritual way. I mean, we it, we can do so good with it. We can do so much good with it and um, the same desire we have for it. The money wants us to be its steward. If you are a good steward to it, the money wants to be with us. OK, so any any other that comes that pops up for you um, to you, Tammy. Any other affirmation here? Oh, geez, there's so, so many great <laughs> My, uh, actions, create constant wealth, prosperity and abundance. Um, I am grateful for the financial stability and abundance in my life. I'm a, I am capable of achieving and maintaining my desired level of abundance. Mm -hmm. And it all depends on, on our attitudes, you know, and stuff and what we, you know, it's not like you said, money's not a bad thing. You know, a lot of times you get, like you said, people think that it's all about, it's not, but if we don't have money, how can we help somebody? Right. You know, it's like for kids that I don't like compassion um, or at your church, you know, we, I taught, we tied to our church or help or take even food to the food banks, um, different things that you can help others, but you can't do that because sadly we have to have money to buy fertilizers for, for vegetables or buy the seeds or different things. Um, so you you do need money to survive. We, we can't give money from an empty wallet. We can't give food yes. from an empty pantry. And that's the thing. There's If, if our purpose and intention is beautiful and, and great and pure, the Lord and, and, and the universe will provide, will provide. So um, it is just so amazing. So here is one last thing. I, my favorite also, one of my favorite series, I am worthy, worthy of all the wealth and happiness I desire. I Are you worthy? Which if you need to work on that, that's my invitation for you to understand that you are worthy. 
some people have come to me saying, no, but every time I, I have money, I misspend it, right? I go reckless with it. And I'm like, well, there's a lot of things we, we you, you can learn here, how you can become a better steward for it or of it, right? So uh, we are worthy of it. Doesn't matter our, the mistakes we've made, okay? So I want you to understand that you can transform by prioritizing your well-being, leading to sustained financial success and a deep sense of self self worth. I have told you, Tammy, and I have told you there are a lot of resources out there. There are YouTube channels. There are books, like I said, in the library for free. There's books available, audiobooks on Kindle or. There's a plethora of resources out there. What Tammy and I are, are another resource for you. And sometimes in life, investing, investing reaps great, great wealth. When you invest, my coaches have told me, like I said earlier, no, you can't afford to not being able to afford this right now. And I make the sacrifice and the effort. What I reap is more knowledge, more wisdom, more value uh, within me for me to share forward and impact and influence, influence the community out there, the world out there. How about you? What are you going to, how are you going to uh, invest in yourself for personal growth, Tammy? And I like I, those I, words, prioritize yourself. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we don't. It's like you have to prioritize your health. You, you need to eat healthy, drink water, exercise, you know, go on some walks. Um, but it's not just physically, it's mentally and emotional health too. And so, and that's where we're here to help you with that and discovering nature and using nature and art to help and to surround yourself with a positive mindset that you've, you've been talking about, Lori. And so. remember this investments. And again, Tammy and I have called about the external, the more on the surface and shallow way people spend, because this is not an investment, spend money, nails, lashes, hair. I mean, and that's okay if it makes us feel happy and good and, and, and presentable. At the same time, equally or more important is for you to invest in that internal beauty, in, in, in personal growth, in changing and progressing in on learning from someone that it's at a different level or a step ahead of you in some areas and for you to improve so that you can do that forward with others, with the community you're surrounded by or with the service or product that you want to offer on your area of expertise. Exactly. And we're talking, we're talking about, you know, some people it's like, it's it's it might be clothing that they just want to spend all their money on that <laughs> makes them feel good right Shoes. <laughs> I, I spend money on um lotions and different things for my skin um you know or to, to have my hair done I mean I do my own nails now but I used to have them done professionally because I used to model my hands <laughs> and so for 13 years my nails were done and looked beautiful all the time um, but what we're talking about is usually if you find yourself spending on money, that is, you're constantly going to buy new outfits because to make you feel good mm -hmm. or constantly find different makeups or different, you're constantly just fragrantly spending. You're not spending on need items. You're going to find there's something deeper inside that you're missing or needing. And that's where we come in. We're trying to help you prioritize and find um, what that is. And that's where Lori is to help you. Yeah, and, and feel that void because what, what you describe is someone that's wanting to find something in, 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 in the wrong place, right? Um, so we are here for you. And the last thing that we want to um, share with you is this quote uh, from the book, Happy Money from Ken Honda. It says, money can be a tool for happiness as long as we understand that it is not the money itself, but how we perceive and use it that makes us happy. That's what makes us happy. <clears throat> Excuse me. When do you do give in that angel tree? When you give to your favorite charity, when you help a loved one accomplish something that they can't do it for themselves, or you lead someone, somebody else to become, you know, like 
that teach someone else to fish, right? Rather than giving the fish all the time. And when we teach these principles to others, oh my goodness, it makes you, us really, really happy. Yes, it does. And I'll be the first to admit, <clears throat> sometimes that brand new pair of shoes makes me happy. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> me too. Right? Me too. Yeah. So that, that... But I also know that I, it's usually that's a treat if I want mm -hmm. to, or like I was telling Lori, it's I bought, my, mm -hmm. I bought a couple of concert tickets, um, the other day and, <laughs> and that's for a treat. You know, I, I, whenever I do an art job or a job, I try to reward myself with a small, something small. You work so hard, Tammy. I am so glad. I was so glad to hear you said that because I'm like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I'll go have fun. I used to not do that, but it's like you only live once. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and if you don't reward yourself with something that can help you or enhance, and actually it's a very positive concert that I'm we're going to. Um, so and it's gonna help. It's, it's, it's kind of like going out in nature or going on a hike or pain or going on an adventure. When you go and do those things or go to a retreat, those help you. It, so it's, it's a reward, but it's also rewarding us for on the inside. It's a healing as yes. well. It's a, it's, it's, it's long lasting, right? That, that experience, that concert, especially the concert you're going to go to is so transformative because you just got out of your, your, your routine. You experienced something live that impacts you and our re signature adventures and our connection adventures are designed for that. And I have told you many, many times how I've been a participant in, in people's um, in other coaches and people's experiences. And I come back a new person and my husband knows it. You know, I come back a new person, better, more improved with more value. And that's what we want to offer you. So Kelly, I am so glad to hear that you've been doing prosperity meditations every day. And that is fantastic. And I want to, to continue doing, encourage you to continue doing it. And I want to remind you that when you want something, all the universe, God, the angels, like we learned about today with Dr. Martin, conspires in help, conspire in helping you or helping us to achieve it. That's a quote by Paolo Coelho. And we want to wish you the best. I want you to understand that when you think of nature, think about how beautiful and balanced and perfect it is, and especially in a rainforest, and integrate that wisdom using uh, available uh, resources efficiently. And I, we want you to master the money mindset so that you can be unstoppable so that you can continue your personal growth and development and become the person you, the amazing person you're meant to be. And this is our message that we have for you today. And I know as I am watching the power of our nature um, live, it's lagging. Uh, I don't know what's going on. It's lagging a little bit, but it's okay. Um, it if you're watching, with the new Facebook feed. <laughs> yes. So I, I'm not seeing more comments live either. But if you watched it as a replay, tell us what you think. Tell us what your takeaways were from this presentation, from this virtual mindset adventure. We want to offer you um, freedom in nature. We want you to discover, experience, and transform. And we hope we, we hit the nail here with you today. And we can't wait to hear from your comments and your experiences as you discover, experience, and transform and with this thing called something they would like to learn about or hear about, an article or something, let us know. We, we do listen. We do. We do. So we want to encourage you and invite you and ask you, what, how is it that you're going to invest in yourself? Check out our website to see if we have an answer for your question. How is it for this question? Um, we have plenty, plenty opportunities from retreats next year, 2025. You can start budgeting and planning for it in San Lucia, Barbados. We have the upcoming one in August in North Idaho. Um, we have many opportunities for you. We have coaching programs and we had, have courses for you. So we trust that you're going to check it out and we can't wait to hear from you and, and deliver. Thanks for everyone for being here. We appreciate you. And be sure to write your questions, comments. We love hearing from you. Thank you. 
Bye-bye. You're welcome, Bye. Kathy. You're welcome. She's saying thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>